Hello and welcome back. Let's have a look today how we can quickly remove a green screen. I will just apply one filter and the green screen is gone. Like magic. No masks applied. Awesome. Even this guy gives a thumbs up for this method. So let's have a look how we can create magic in Affinity Photo. Trick is to use a procedural texture filter using two tolerance parameters and apply a formula for the alpha which computes the Euclidean distance between the input pixel and ideal green. Depending on the tolerance values, the alpha is adjusted. There is also a second function for the green channel which does a simple green spill correction. I will provide the formulas in the description. Do not forget to add the two parameters, tall A and tall B, as a 0 to 1 range input. By using the two tolerance values, you can control how much of the green you would like to see gone. It works pretty well for quick masking green screens. And of course the quality of the green screen has a great impact on the output of this filter. Let me share how you can use this filter and which additional steps you probably need to do. Let me open up a layer I prepared earlier. Let's have a closer look. So I have a mask which softens the borders. Then I have a HSL correction for the skin and an HSR correction for the spill on the shirt. Let me remove those and demonstrate how to redo them for tutorial purposes. So the first thing you can do when you have a green screen is to use this filter to remove the green screen as much as possible. Once you applied the filter and happy with the results, we can make a mask out of it. By keeping the command key pressed and clicking on the layer, we get a selection of the layer. As the procedural filter removes the greens, you will get a selection of your subject. I am going to use this selection to create a mask. But before doing that, I am going to soften it by first shrinking the selection with 2 pixels. That's why I enter minus 2. And then applying a feather of 2 pixels. If I press the mask button now, a mask will be created with the selection we just modified. Perfect. Let's zoom in and see what we did. Well, the two pixels was a bit too much for this image, but I think it gives you a better idea what happened. I'm going to disable the procedural filter as we don't need it anymore. The advantage of using a mask now is that we can correct things manually for the areas the filter did not work. In this example, well, it's not really needed. So, the next step is to remove the green spill. I will be using an HSL adjustment, but feel free to use any other method to correct the colors. So the first HSL will be on the skin, as it feels a bit yellowish and greenish. With the picker, I select the skin area which has the most green spill and adjust the sliders until I get a value I'm happy with. Usually, you have to lower the saturation a bit and move the hue a bit to the right. I'm also going to add another HSL, but this time for the shirt. As I use the large feather, I don't have that much of a spill, but the idea is the same as before. With the picker tool, select an area around the border of the shirt which has the spill and adjust the sliders. As a final step, optionally, I will also do his jeans. I think it looks good, but just for demonstration purposes, let's make it a little bit more blue. Steps are the same, pick a color, and adjust until you get the color you want. As you also might have noticed, the last HSL also affected his tie. To fix that, I will just invert the built-in mask in the HSL by pressing Command I and then paint with white on the jeans to get the effect back. Using this masking technique, 
you can add as many HSL or color corrections as you want, correct specific areas that need attention. Not bad at all. Let me enable another layer, show you an extra example. I applied exactly the same steps here. Use the procedural filter to remove the green from that, a mask to fine tune the small errors, and finally a selective color adjustment to remove the green cast to a more red cast. Awesome! I hope you liked this video. And before you leave, let me quickly finish this image. Probably the most stupid composition I have ever made. Anyway, thanks for watching.